the Ecosystem Director of Air Mobility and Airports at Connected Places Catapult. Hannah Chu, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening. I share Professor Brian Cox's vision to make the UK the best place to do science and engineering in the world. So it is an honour to share a platform with him and the other speakers. I would especially like to thank Lord Andrew Mawson and Richard Mallett for introducing me to CEO John Barber and the inspirational North Star Science School team. I am so grateful for this opportunity to meet South Yorkshire parents, teachers, civic and business leaders. So by way of reminder, I'm Hannah Chu, Ecosystem Director for Air Mobility and Airports at Connected Places Catapult. And I'm here to tell you about my career in STEAM and my passion for engineering and fostering an innovative and inclusive industry. I'd like to talk to you as a daughter, a parent, as an engineer and a placemaker who has worked hard to carve out a career remembering my parents and the teachers that set me on my way. I'll then conclude this talk by telling you about my current exciting role in aviation. Now, despite my Bristol accent, for 10 years I've been a proud adopted Sheffielder, so I will relish giving you a flavour of what Connected Places Catapult is doing in aviation innovation here in Yorkshire. I don't want you left in any doubt that for your children and mine, whatever they choose to do, the sky's in the limit. So here goes. My parents massively empowered me, supporting me through thick and thin. Being quite an academically bright girl was not always easy as a teenager. My parents encouraged me to do and be whatever I wanted to do and be. They were supportive and with no expectations, they told me the world was my oyster. Can you imagine your children on a platform with the likes of Lord Andrew Mawson and Professor Brian Cox meeting a wonderful audience like yourselves? They could one day. All my days, how proud of me my mum is today. Were he still alive, today would have been my dad's 70th birthday. There is something very special about sharing today with you and celebrating his support for me. He would have been so proud too. I was at primary school in the 1980s. Boys and girls were segregated to play. Year three and four boys in one playground and the girls and everyone else in a separate yard. So on day one, I'd literally been told no because I was a girl. So we protested and literally marched on the boys' playground and we got things changed. I'm from a modest and comprehensive school background, the first generation of my family to go straight from school to university. I have had people with unconditional belief in me. My teachers, Mr. Buckley and Ms. Kerfoot, stand out with all the enthusiasm they poured into our science experience. I recognise that not everybody has cheerleaders at home, parents that are in a position to come to an evening like this, or even support from elsewhere. And this is where mentoring is so important and why we are all the more fortunate to have North Star fostering an environment of awareness and access. Having mentioned university, it's important for me to say from the outset that some of the most brilliant colleagues I've worked with through my career have come through various routes, not just university. When I made my GCSE and A-level choices, I had no idea what I wanted to be. I wrangled between business studies and chemistry. A wise person told me then, you can always go from sciences to business, but rarely do people successfully go the other way. All my choices were about keeping doors open, and this is how I'm approaching GCSE choices with my eldest son, who was here earlier today. As parents, we should feel encouraged that our children's careers won't be quite so defined by what they choose as they may have been for our generation. When it came to a degree choice, I knew I was more of an applied scientist or an engineer than I was a pure scientist. I love problem solving, so I chose engineering, specifically material science and engineering, again, keeping doors open. 
During the first year of my degree, I, like Professor Brian Cox, got to look up to the stars. We were given a small budget to design, make and evaluate our very own tracking astrophotography camera stand. It had to be collapsible and lightweight, so we used aluminium. Let me tell you, there are few greater pleasures than handling a, freshly piece, a piece of freshly machined aluminium turned by your own hand. A major national newspaper reported on our aluminium creation. Hannah Chu, a woman from Bristol, it stated. That's really the only thing I can remember about that article. It made me laugh, but I also felt let down that this is the way they chose to define me. They could have, I could have been Hannah Chu, an engineer from Bristol, which, considering they were writing a piece on engineering, might have been more appropriate. As part of my degree, I had two international placements. I worked in Stuttgart, Germany, for the Max Planck Research Institute, and I worked with the car manufacturer Volvo in Gothenburg, Sweden. Whilst I was there, as well as working very hard, I also explored doing things like dog sledging north of the Arctic Circle. It's not just the studying and the working that shapes us. I graduated my bachelor's and I undertook a master's of science. Following university, I have worked in a variety of engineering roles. I have spent my whole career working in innovation in collaborative research and development. My first foray into the UK's composite industry was in a manufacturing company in Somerset. Composites, by the way, are a material produced from two or more constituent materials. Recruited as a materials technologist, I was soon promoted to technical manager. I spent many nights heading back in for a 2 a.m. trials as we scaled up new products. I then moved to Southampton to work on composites research and development. Whilst I was there, I decided it was time for babies. So I left and went on a maternity break. A decade ago, my then husband and I, with our family, followed his job to Sheffield. Coming to Yorkshire turned out to be the best geographical move I have ever made. After four years as a full-time mum and a charity volunteer, it was my time to re-engage with my engineering career. I took up a part-time role at the University of Sheffield's Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, AMRC. My AMRC role enabled me to work with brilliant Sheffield-based companies, from startup SMEs like PES Performance, to further afield, to the world's largest and most technologically advanced companies, aerospace and automotive, such as Ford, Nissan, Airbus, McLaren and Boeing, to name but a few. I've even been to the Boeing 787 assembly line in Charleston. That's Lego on an unimaginable scale. My fact-finding mission report resulted in high-tech engineering jobs being created here in Sheffield. When I started at Sheffield's Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, I developed business processes to help it rise to the challenges of a fast-growing organisation. In 2016, Sheffield's AMRC was awarded a grant, the application for which I conceived and delivered, to take the Composite Centre to the next level in technical textiles with a multi-million investment in equipment. This has gone on to create new ways of manufacturing aerospace and automotive components, anchoring jobs in the UK and here in South Yorkshire. The University of Sheffield's AMRC is part of the UK's high-value manufacturing catapult. The high-value manufacturing catapult is the largest research and technology organisation for manufacturing research and development in Europe. I have represented both AMRC and high-value manufacturing catapult globally, including, for example, to car manufacturers in Japan. In recognition of my contribution to national strategy to the composites industry, I was made fellow by my professional institute in 2020. In 2019, it was finally time to embrace business studies, and I embarked on a part-time MBA. I graduated earlier this year. As well as research and development, one of our AMRC focuses 
in collaboration with Sheffield City Council, was bringing supply chain businesses to scout for potential local sites and collaborating with them on skills development for local job creation with the AMRC Training Centre. I then moved, excuse me, whew, I then moved to the UK government's official research and innovation funding body, UKRI, to work on the Future Flight Challenge, a £300 million joint government and industry programme to spurn innovation in this emerging part of the UK's aviation sector. After a valuable year of experience at UKRI, Connected Places Catapult advertised my current role, Director of Air Mobility. It is a unique role to anchor the business opportunities of the Future Flight Challenge programme firmly into the UK's supply chains. The Connected Places Catapult, like the High Value Manufacturing Catapult, belongs to a network of nine UK catapult centres. The Connected Places Catapult is the UK's innovation accelerator for cities, transport and place leadership. We are passionate about Yorkshire and about every part of the United Kingdom. Our innovators come from a wide range of organisations and sectors. Um, the entrepreneur with a brilliant innovation, the government policy maker or university researcher trying to make the impossible possible, the engineer in a company focusing on business growth, and let's never forget the investors. These and many others pass through our door every day and collaborate with us across the UK. So that's a bit of background but I haven't got to the best bit yet. What's my actual job at Connected Places Catapult? Well, my colleagues, partners and I are creating, nurturing and convening the innovation ecosystem in the UK for aviation. Here in Yorkshire, more people have been experiencing the growing economic benefits of the UK's aerospace engineering, that is, the design and manufacturing of the vehicle. But aviation is a hidden gem in the UK, directly employing 230,000 people in the UK. We are on the leading edge of aviation products and services, which we export globally. Connected Places Catapult is chairing the Zero Emission Flight Working Group of the Government's Jet Zero Council to speed the development of hydrogen and battery electric as a fuel for commercial flight. A study published earlier this year demonstrated the feasibility of the aerospace engineering required to realise hydrogen flight for commercial aviation by 2035. We are helping the aviation industry to spur the required innovation needed to bring us closer to net zero flight. So for the last few minutes, I want to share with you probably the most exciting thing that has happened in my career to date working with Connected Places Catapult partners to help Britain be at the forefront of the great third revolution of flight. So, the first revolution was the Wright brothers taking to the sky for the first time in the last century, the birth of aviation as we know it. The second revolution was Frank Whittle's invention here in the UK of the jet engine making transatlantic commercial flight possible and making the globe a smaller place. We are now on the cusp of a third great revolution of aviation. That revolution is flexible aviation. New classes of radically different air vehicles being born green that will be able to connect people, goods and places like never before. We will very, see, very soon see the introduction of electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, EV tolls, think air taxis. These will be ready to fly in the next couple of years. Over the next couple of decades, these air vehicles will be capable of automated and autonomous flight. That's what we expect to see by 2050. The introduction of a whole new class of transport is no mean feat. The complex systems of systems required for the safe transport of people and goods from the minute you book your travel until arrival at destination is already spurring a whole new industry. In the UK, we are well positioned to lead this revolution. Connected Places Catapult and our partners are determined that the UK will keep that lead and the jobs that it brings. But it's not just about the vehicle. How are these vehicles going to interact with space and people? 
Imagine a future where you and I consider air transport as a day-to-day -day activity. This is a future that Connected Places Catapult envisages, and I sit on a government-chaired transport policy panel to ensure that we're preparing for this. One of the fastest moving parts of this industry is the introduction of drones to our airspace. You may have already seen them flying in open spaces, piloted from the ground. Current regulations mean you must be able to see the vehicle that you're flying. In other words, we fly in visual line of sight. Imagine a future where we are free of needing a physical pilot looking at the drone, a system that is capable of remotely piloting the drone in question, and so sophisticated and integrated, it knows where every other vehicle is in the sky, and as such can amend the flight path remotely. This is what Connected Places Catapult is collaborating on with UK's Future Flight Challenge, in conjunction with the Department for Transport and the Civil Aviation Authority to realise. So how do we create a future when medicines, emergency responses, perhaps even your Friday pizza delivery, all happen remotely, piloted, and point to point? Working with Yorkshire Housing last year, we demonstrated how drones could enable a step change in the way buildings and assets are inspected. The repair and maintenance bill for social housing to the UK is more than £3.6 billion annually. It's been shown that using a preventative maintenance regime, 12 to 18% of this cost could be saved. As part of this work, the UK Drone Trade Association, RPAS, interviewed Renfrewshire Council in Scotland and found out about the over 4 million annual saving they've made by using drones to inspect their local social housing. That survey would have taken years to complete. It was carried out in less than two months. The evidence is building. Many applications could save time, could reduce risk to human life, and could reduce environmental burden. Imagine inspecting the many, many miles of power cables and the many offshore installations by drone. How much quicker, safer, and cleaner could it be? Staying here in Yorkshire, Connected Places Catapult supported Sheffield City region-based Buxton Mountain Rescue to demonstrate how drones can be used for rescue and to save lives, even in inclement weather conditions. Partnering with Glasgow Airport and NHS Scotland, among many others, Connected Places Catapult are working to demonstrate medical deliveries across the nation and to some of the remotest parts of the UK. This will result in a scalable solution that other UK partners may choose to adopt. A project colleague of mine said, it's a rare thing in someone's career to be able to build a whole new transport system. This may never happen again. But it won't happen overnight, and it won't happen without the right skills being developed. So, Connected Places Catapult is currently undertaking a study to highlight the skills we need to develop now to enable the UK to utilise the benefits of this new industry. A 2022 report commissioned for the UK Government suggests that if the full breadth of drone applications can be realised, the economic benefit to the UK of the drone industry by 2030 could be £45 billion, with up to 650,000 jobs associated with the drone economy, and with a £22 billion cost saving to the wider UK economy. That same report also suggested that the uptake of drones could reduce carbon emissions to the equivalent of removing 1.7 million cars from the road for a year. Excitingly, Connected Places Catapult published a report earlier this year on the findings of a full-scale simulated planning application for a city centre drone port. This was led with Coventry City Council. This simulation drone port was built at scale and demonstrated in April this year, providing a real-world template for drone ports in the very near future. So industry and civic leaders, with a predicted 900,000 drones in flight by 2030, if your housing development or town planning hasn't yet considered a drone port, it's time to look at them again. Vertical takeoff and landing air vehicles, such as flying taxis and drones, will need a fraction of the land and infrastructure required by an airport. These are called vertiports. 
Next year, to inform place leaders, Connected Places Catapult will publish a study into the socio-economic benefits of a vertiport to their local communities. Last year, Harry Burroughs from AMRC told this North Star Science School that the engineers of tomorrow cannot mould themselves on the engineers of today. I think this is true, and by the time our children are going into the workplace, they will be engineering things that today only exist in our collective imagination. It's a great time to be an engineer in the UK and indeed in South Yorkshire. If your children or students want to be involved in aerospace or aviation engineering, the sky is literally the limit. There is a growing high-tech job market for them in the UK. This evening, I've given you a quick run-through of some of the highlights of my career. I explained how keeping the doors open with my academic and career choices has enabled me to achieve things, even without a great master plan in place. Often, it's one step at a time. And then, when we got to my Connected Places catapult role, I hope I've left you in no doubt of some of the mind-blowing tidbits about the exciting world that is coming and the opportunities that will bring our young people in the future jobs market. I shared a Connected Places catapult vision of future flight, and that future is now. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. And on this, my dad's 70th birthday, my mum is here in the audience. Mum, thank you for your support as ever. Good night. Oh, wow, oh. Hannah, fantastic, thank you. Hannah, cheer everybody. Yeah, I think you should come and take a bow. Hannah, cheer. That's amazing. Thank what you. Incredible thank, you. thank you, Hannah, and thank you for coming. That's all right. Thank, thank you for having me. Was. Thank you.